Hi all, welcome to uh, video 4 in the series. Um, today we're looking at taking top down shots of your um, corals. Um, if you're new to the series, um, we've got three videos out so far. First one is selecting equipment. Second one is taking um, pictures of your fishing coral through the front of the tank. And third one is taking full tank shots. So today we're looking at top down shots. Um, welcome to my fish room. Um, sorry if you can hear some strange noises, I've got all sorts of contraptions running in here. Um, just behind the camera there's a clown tank with some wave boxes. Um, down in the corner I've got some automatic water changes happening so you might hear some pumps make some strange noises. But um, today we'll be focusing on this one which is my um, first frag tank. Um, it's got a it's a good reason to pick that tank. It's got a plethora of corals in there that are ripe for picking for top down shots. And it's just a little bit easier for me to take the video because um, I don't have to be up on a chair or on a platform taking top downs. It's going to make it easy to talk to you. So. Um, yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Um, um, we're looking at taking some top-down shots of our corals, whether they be SPS, LPS, softies, silvers, whatever it is, doesn't matter. We're going to follow a similar sort of principle. Um, we'll cover taking pictures of a few different ones. But um, basically, we've already looked at selecting equipment. Um, so you've already got your camera body. When taking top-downs, you do want to have a little bit of consideration for what lens you're using. Um, I touched on it in the first video of the series on speaking about the minimum focusing distance. Um, you can look that up in the specs of your um, of the, the manual of your lens, but if you're not sure, when you um, focus and you, you move the slider, you'll actually get a, a measurement on there which will tell you how far from the um, item you need to be to for that to focus in. So it's a, it's a really quick way to look at any lens and see what the minimum focusing distance is. Um, this Canon macro, the 100mm f2.8L, it's a ripper of a lens and it's perfect for top downs. It's got a minis minimum focusing distance of uh, 30 centimeters, which lets us get pretty close to the corals. Um, and it's just super quick and takes a, a ripper of a shot. If you don't have anything with a minimum focusing distance that short, um, there are some other things we can do and we'll talk about those a little bit later, looking at extension tubes, which will make any lens um, act a little bit more like a macro. It'll let you get a lot closer to the item you're taking a picture of for it to focus. Um, but uh, for the first point, let's start off using a, a dedicated macro lens, which lets us get nice and close. All right, the next thing you want to do is um, prepare your tank. Um, obviously, if you're going to be taking top-down shots, you're going to need the lights on. <laughs> I mean, it's an obvious one, but you're going to need the lights on, and you're going to need to not get in the way of your lights. I know that sounds a bit weird, but if I try to take a picture and I put the camera right in the middle of it, I create the shadow, and then the... Um, the picture's going to be in the well. The coral is going to be in the dark, and it's going to be hard to take that picture. I know when we um, talked about taking pictures of your coral and fish through the front of the tank, that we said that you've got to try and keep really square. Um, you don't want to be trying to shoot on angles. You can get away with that a little bit more when you're doing top downs because your your lens, is, well, not your lens, but um, your top down device. This one being in a vast um, porthole, it can sit on the water and it can sit on an angle. Um, it doesn't give you the same sort of distortion that it does using through the glass. Um, so it lets you be a little bit more creative. So I could come over this side and take an angle shot like that, which will also help me with my minimum focusing distance. Um, the next thing people do is, a lot of people switch off their flow when they're taking um, pictures within their tank. Personally, I don't. You can see I've got my um, pump still still running here. I think you can see the video. Yeah, you can see the surface disruption. Um, mainly because I don't know about you, but I find when you turn pumps off, the corals look a bit different. They sort of spread out and they look strange. I don't want to take pictures of what my corals look like when they're not being themselves. I want the picture of what they look like when I see them 24 seven. I'll leave the flow on. The only exception I'll make to that is if um, I took pictures of a tank the other day and there was some serious flow in the tank. And when I was trying to hold the camera steady, the camera was moving like this with the, with the wave pumps, which was pretty intense. Um, that being said, I actually still left the flow pumps on. I just braced up against an edge, which held the camera steady for me. Up to you, you can turn the flow off if you want to. I leave it on. Um, the only other thing you probably need to consider, and we don't need to do it with the frag tank here, because it's the benefit of a frag tank, it's at my height. If you're at your display tank, you might want to get a chair, or um, Bunning sell these awesome little work platforms. Um, they're with adjustable legs. Um, you want something safe, you're going to be standing up, relatively high, probably a meter up off the ground, with your head in the tank, not looking where you're standing, moving around, it can be dangerous, so be careful. A chair would be the absolute minimum to go for. If you can get something that's got a decent sort of platform, or you can have someone even watch you, I know it sounds a bit corny, 
But if you can have someone sort of make sure you're not going to step off the chair or off the platform, it's a good idea. All right, let's get into um, setting up your camera to take shots for top downs. It's, it is a little bit different to taking pictures um, from outside the tank, um, mainly because of the light you're playing with and how close you're getting to the subject. Um, I find because we end up getting so close to the subject, you might need to raise your aperture up a little bit. Otherwise, um, if, you're, if you're F setting, your aperture is set a bit low. So if you're down at F2.8 or F3.5, you won't get the entire coral um, in focus. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you just want that one of an acro or something, you want that one branch at the front or the tip of the branch in focus and everything else blurring out behind it. Um, I'm gonna take some pictures of some zoas and things in here and I, I sort of wanna keep them mostly in focus and because, yeah, because you get so close to them, if, if your aperture's too low, you're gonna get like one frill of the zoa in focus and everything goes out, so it's a bit silly. Um, that being said, you do get a really dramatic effect when you get that blur in the background. So this is one of those times where I probably straddle the middle around f4, f4.5, maybe even f5, depending on how the lighting goes. Um, our next setting, ISO. I'm oh, sorry, not ISO, we'll get to ISO last because I always find that one's the, the decider. You, you only play with ISO depending on what the other two do. Our shutter speed, um, it will depend on the coral you're taking pictures of. Um, if it's fairly still, like if, it, if it's a Zoa or it's a Acro or um, what else have I got in here? Pretty much anything other than LPS. I've got a couple of torches in here that are swaying around, but everything else remains pretty still. Um, obviously some of your Acros can get really hairy polyps, but um, if there's nothing swaying too much, slow your shutter speed down. It may mean that some of your shots will come out a bit blurry, but um, it'll just let you get so much more light in the picture or it'll let you keep the ISO down. I'd much rather take 20 pictures and have one that's not blurry, but it looks absolutely killer, it's really good quality, than out of the 20 pictures, take 19 of them, and um, they're, they're not blurry, but they're not that good, they're grainy because of the ISO has been turned up. So I like to bring my shutter speed down to maybe like 1 60th of a second, maybe even slower if it's something that's really still low, 1 40th of a second if you can. Um, it'll let you keep that ISO really low and get rid of all those grainy settings all the grainy images. Um, so yeah, have a play with the pictures, you, with the subject to take pictures of, see how you go. Um, one other trick that I do when I'm shooting top downs is, it's not, not too bad in the frag tank because I probably could look through it okay, but I, I turn live view on. So I can show you on the Canon. If I turn my camera on, there's this button up here, which basically um, starts live view. So if I press that, it just gives you a live view, so you don't have to look through the eyepiece. Um, I find this particularly handy when you're um, maneuvering around your tank like this. It, it's there's not enough room to get your head over it to look under there. Um, in this tank where I've got this dirty big halide above it, it will mean I have to shield it a bit so I can see what I'm looking at. Um, but it's still significantly easier than trying to get my eye on the eyepiece, or even worse, just shooting blind. So it's worth getting used to your live view and giving that a crack. Um, I don't really use it for anything other than, than top down shots, but it can be handy. I find it, particularly when my camera's a little bit older, when I'm shooting in live view, it feels like the camera operates a little bit slower, probably using some of the memory to, or some of the CPU power to, to power the screen. But it's it's a worthwhile trade-off because you can actually see what you're looking at. You can do it from a distance. You can be here and looking at the screen, hold down, find what you want, and shoot from there. The final piece of equipment that you really need um, is, of course, your... Um, porthole or whether it be um, a cup or whether it be a Tupperware container, whether it be a Ferrero Rocher box, whatever you're using, you're going to need something that goes in the water because obviously you've got surface disruption which when you look at the top of your tank you can't really see much at all. I guess you could turn all your flow off and it'll make your water go like glass, you can try and take a picture there. <sighs> Up to you, I don't have a lot of success with that. Um, I have thought of one other thing that I'll mention before I put the porthole on because once I put the porthole on it kind of restricts all my settings on the camera. This lens in particular has got a couple of options on the side here, it's going to be a little bit hard to see. Um, first thing you do is make sure the stabilizer's on just because I try to always have that on, it just keeps for a steadier shot. I leave autofocus on if you, mainly because when I've got the um, porthole on it, it just, I can't get to the focus so I'm going to leave autofocus on. But the really important one is this, uh, it's the range. 
So this, this lens is, it's a macro lens, um, but it can be used for things other than macros. So essentially, um, it allows you to decide whether you're talking, taking pictures of things between 30 centimeters and 50 centimeters away, or 50 centimeters um, and further, or the full range. Um, you could leave it on full, it just means sometimes when you're trying to focus on things, the camera will take a little bit longer to work out what it's pointing at. If you went for the half a meter and further, you're probably never going to get focused because your tank's not going to be that deep. In this instance, because it's a frag tank and it's so narrow, I'm not going to take a picture of anything that's deeper than 30 centimeters, um, or sorry, deeper than 50 centimeters. So I'm going to keep it to the 30 to 50 centimeter um, setting. Other than that, I'm going to put my porthole on and uh, then we can take some shots. I've got my porthole added to the camera. Um, one tip with this, don't get caught in the moment and put your lens too far into the, into the tank because even though I've got this porthole, it is only that deep and water can go in there and destroy your camera and lens. So obviously you don't want to go any deeper than the porthole will let you. So you have to be careful of that. Um, if you're in a setup like this where your tank's nearby, I have a, or you're taking your lens in and out of the tank I should say, I have a table next to me here with a towel on it just so I can sit that on it, otherwise I'm getting tank water everywhere, it looks messy. Um, right, so I've got my porthole on, camera's ready to go. For a baseline setting, I've gone, I'll put a screenshot up, I've gone for 1 50th of a second, so quite slow. Got an aperture of 4.5 and uh, an ISO of 400. And the pictures could be a bit bright, but we'll see how we go. I'll get a few snaps in. Alright, so. As mentioned, I turned the light view on so I can see what's going on there. I shield it from the halo, which is super bright. Basically, point and shoot. I have a look around, see what catches my eye. Half press to focus, full press to take the picture. What have we got here? We've got a nice bird's nest. Try and focus on a nice point. And you can see there when I'm taking pictures, I'm not exactly straight on. Doesn't matter, as long as the, tip, the whole uh, porthole stays in the water, you won't get that reflection or reverberation. And let's have a look, some Zoas, they always make a nice picture. Even at 1 50th of a second, things aren't moving, it's not like they're fish, they're not moving that fast. The pictures come out fine. That one's probably a touch blurry, so I've probably got a bit unlucky, but I'd still rather have a couple of blurry shots to delete those than have all of my shots a bit high, nice, and grainy. Um, I'll try and get a cool picture. I've got some wicked um, frags from Gallery Aquatica. Big shout out to Anya. Let's see what else we can get here. Alright, so here I'm taking a picture of something, and the uh, porthole's blocking the light. Um, to the shot a little, which that's okay, you're doing a slightly darker shot, but you just gotta try and not block the whole thing because otherwise it's completely in the dark and then well, your picture won't work really that well at all. Yeah, so I'm blocking my light there, come over this way. Completely blocking my subject there, here we go. Taking a picture of a torch, it's probably going to need to be a bit quicker. Yeah, it's not too bad, it's a touch blurry. It's not too bad. Okay, so I kept snapping away there for a fair while. Here's some of the pics I like the most. Um, a few different colors, a few different species, a bit of a variety. That's a Cephestra, I think. It's a Fastra. Um, this is a cool acro. It actually has got a really bright purple tip. This is the bluest stag I've ever seen. The tips just get darker and darker as it goes. This is a nice green and blue. Um, this is a basic pectina, but it looks incredible from top down. And of course, the um, expensive red recordias look a million bucks. Uh, this next shot coming up, something a little bit more artistic. It's a barley slimer, but with just the black background really makes it stand out a bit. 
This is one of my favorite acros. It's a real basic one um, to the naked eye, but when you get a macro lens on it, it looks amazing. And following that basic theme, here's a palm tree coral, which I think looks incredible with a macro lens. Okay, so we took a picture of a few things in the tank. Um, obviously, like I mentioned, that lens has got a, a minimum focusing distance of 30 centimeters. Um, some of my frags up here are maybe, I've got a, a four tiered frag rack in there and some of the frags will range from being about three centimeters under the water down to at, at most 30. Um, so what do I do? Or what if I didn't have a macro lens and I've only got um, something that's got a half meter focusing distance and um, I need to get closer or I do have a macro lens and I still just want to get closer, get a really close up picture. Um, there are these things available called uh, extension tubes. Um, they're available for different cameras. This one's a uh, Kenko extension tube set. Bought them off eBay. It comes with three different sizes, a 12 mm, a 20 and a 36. Interestingly, you can um, stack them together. So at the moment here, I have the 12, the 20 and the 36 all screwed together. Basically what all these do, and I'll take one off and put it on for you, is that actually this screws to your camera and this side your lens screws to there. It moves your lens further away from the camera, um, which dramatically reduces your minimum focusing distance. Um, I'll set one up on the camera now. Um, it does come at the cost of a little bit of light. Um, so everything's a trade-off with photography. Um, there's no, definitely no magic bullets. So. Um, you might need to bump up the ISO or you might need to slow the shutter speed down or you just might need to find something that's really bright to take a picture of but it will let us get really really close and get those wicked macro shots so I'll pop this on now and we'll see the sort of shots we get all right so just a couple of quick sample pictures using an extension tube they look much the same they just let you get a little bit closer um, or a lot closer I guess so if you don't have a macro lens I'd really give them a shot you can use most um, use them with any lens really if you've got a macro lens, I'd probably go without them. Um, this is the last one I've got pretty close up on a bird's nest there. But uh, that pretty much rounds up this week's video. So um, coming up next will be post-processing. I really appreciate um, all the input everyone's had in these, and um, I hope they've been worth your while. Thanks for watching. Cheers.